introduction of chemicals into coastal ecosystems is not the only way we're polluting the ocean. We're also using the ocean as a dumping ground for our garbage. Since 1996, NOAA and other organizations have removed over 400 metric tons of marine debris from the northwestern Hawaiian Islands. Due to the direction of prevailing currents, these islands have become the final resting place for discarded refuse from throughout the North Pacific. This debris is primarily made up of derelict fishing gear, lost or discarded at sea. All of this net is potentially entangling and in fact has entangled fish and monk seals and sharks and other creatures. As the fish get entangled in there, they're a good source of food for other creatures and the net becomes very attractive to other predatory fish and sharks. And consequently, these nets can go on for many, many years entangling and killing large number of creatures. The Hawaiian monk seal population has shrunk by more than 60% in the last 50 years. And entanglement in marine debris is one of the causes of this decline. No animal is free from the threat of entanglement. This humpback whale was lucky and was eventually cut free. Char Smith is the executive director of Kahea, the Hawaiian Environmental Alliance organization. I think there are solutions to addressing the problem of marine debris, which, which do threaten the livelihood of, of monk seals and also sea turtles. And, uh, many other species as well. Birds are majorly affected by marine debris. So uh, one, one immediate solution that could happen would be to require that the fishing gear and nets be tagged so that it can be traced back to the origin and that there be f stiff fines imposed on the release of the gear and in essence creating disincentives to allow that stuff to be uh, thrown overboard. The problem of debris is not merely confined to the far reaches of the northwestern Hawaiian Islands. Shorelines throughout the entire archipelago are littered with our garbage. In 1960, approximately 6.3 billion pounds of plastic were produced in the United States. By 1988, this figure had grown almost eight times to 50 billion pounds. In the year 2001, the U.S. annual consumption rate exceeded 94 billion pounds. That's more than 15 pounds of plastic for every person on Earth. And although much of this plastic ends up in the landfill, a huge percentage finds its way to the ocean. It has recently been discovered that for every one pound of plankton living in the North Pacific, there is six pounds of plastic. Most of the plastic found littering the ocean, like other forms of pollution, originates from the land. It is either simply left on the beach, washed into the ocean via storm drains, or blown from trash cans and even landfills many miles inland. One landfill on the island of Maui is situated in an area that is open to the prevailing trades. These strong winds whip up plastic bags and blow them straight out to sea. Fields and trees surrounding the landfill are literally strewn with plastic bags. This garbage poses an enormous threat to marine life. Floating plastic debris is often mistaken for food by many species. 
seabirds are particularly susceptible. Studies conducted on Midway Island have found plastics in the stomachs of 90% of the island's Laysan albatross. And that's devastating when you consider that Midway is home to 71% of the world's breeding population. One of the factors that probably contributes to the albatross not being successful here on Midway is how much plastic they ingest. Here's a fishing lure. And you can see how big this stomach's supposed to be full of food, and instead it's full of all these big pieces of plastic, and so the stomach's only so big. And so a lot of the volume is taken up by the plastics that it ingests, and then it feels full when it probably isn't. Many people still fail to understand the detriment our garbage can pose to wildlife and continue to litter parks and beaches. The 2003 International Coastal Cleanup determined that over half of all trash removed from beaches around the world can be attributed to recreational shoreline activities such as beach picnickers. Discarding your trash properly may mean the difference between life and death for many marine animals. There's a many, many, many things that people can do. There's many resources available on the web or just looking at logical ways to reduce reliance on plastic would be reuse your plastic bags for one thing, uh, to also to take cloth bags to the grocery store. It's something that you just have to train yourself to realize that wow, this really does have an impact. Everything that we do actually impacts the ocean. Whether you live on the mainland, whether you live in Europe, whether you live in Asia, in the middle of a continent, eventually the things we do on land affect the ocean. This is the ocean planet. And if everyone in their own way is able to reduce their impact on the land, it will affect and help the ocean. The ocean is increasingly becoming a hazardous environment for all marine life. Those animals that survive the manipulation and pollution of their environment also have to run the gauntlet of being fished from the reef and served as dinner. Overfishing is the third way in which our interests are in conflict with those of marine life. When we begin to compare the health of heavily impacted reefs with the biodiversity found in marine parks that are protected, the scale of the damage we're causing becomes more apparent. Molokini Island off the coast of Maui is one of Hawaii's few marine preserves and Molokini's reefs are brimming with life. Large fish, such as sharks and trevelys, are a common sight, along with countless schools of smaller reef fish 